I was very fortunate to grow up uh, in an active family, brothers and sisters, mother and father who, you know, valued uh, exercise and sports. And so we played tennis, we played golf, we did things as a family. My dad was a basketball player at Xavier back in the late 40s. And um, so as long as I can remember, little boy, I had a basketball in my hand and a basket in the backyard. And it was something I could do with my brothers and something I could do with my dad. First person I wanted to beat on the basketball court was my older sister. So the bar was not extremely high when I got started. <laughs> and then it was my mother. My mom was a pretty good athlete, played a lot of tennis, and uh, she was very competitive in board games, didn't matter what it was. And so um, not only was I playing uh, a lot of different sports, but I also wanted to win at a young age. I hated losing in anything. And um, I think by the time I was 13 years old, I was the best player in the family. We had really great high school teams in Southern Ohio. Hamilton, Ohio uh, was in a very, um, it was a hotbed for talent at that time when I was growing up. They won the state championship in 61, they won it in 62. So I was like eight, nine, 10 years old going to the high school games, watching the best team in the state of Ohio. And that coach was well known as a terrific coach. And when I started playing organized basketball in junior high school, that high school coach would come to the junior high school coach and direct how he wanted to see the team play. What kind of offense? Well, he was feeding us the, you know, the right way to play at a very young age. And so when I got to high school, I was well prepared and uh, he was way ahead of his game. His name was Marv McCollum. And Marv, um, he was the president of the high, Ohio High School Basketball Association when I became a sophomore at Kentucky. So that tells you in what esteem he was thought of among his own peers as coaches. Your dad was a coach, and, and that's a big advantage to be able to talk basketball, learn how to play the right way. And it was an extreme advantage for me to have a coach that I had in my high school. Uh, and to this day, uh, my dad and my high school coach are the two most important people in my life. Certainly in the southern Ohio area, Fred Taylor from Ohio State, Tay Baker from University of Cincinnati, Daryl Hedrick from Miami of Ohio, Don Donaher from Dayton, and I named just the schools within maybe, you know, 60, 70 miles from my high school, and that's where I thought I was going to go. And. Um, the better that I played my sophomore and then by my junior year pretty much uh, I was getting you know 150 200 letters and um, you know all the big schools not John Wooden from UCLA not Bobby Knight from Indiana um, I was waiting on that letter never got it but uh, the highest uh, program was Kentucky probably you know, I remember my dad saying, you know, all these schools that we've been watching and, and in the early 60s, Ohio State and Cincinnati were uh, trading for NCAA championships. Uh, Kentucky was good, but they weren't as good as Ohio State and Cincinnati. I thought they were, uh, and he said, no, Kevin, Kentucky. If you think you're really good, you want to go to a school like Kentucky. So, you know, I kind of went under the radar. I saw Pistol Pete play here. Uh, in an unofficial visit. Uh, saw him score, you know, 55 points. Saw Dan Issel, saw all these guys. And uh, my official visit uh, came later after uh, my basketball season, my senior year. I was kind of late in getting that official visit. Hunter Brothers Pizza has been proudly serving communities across America for over 25 years. Download the Hunt Brothers Pizza app to find one of our 7,500 locations inside a convenience store near you. Are you a sporting shooter, hunter, or looking for the best concealed carry option? Bud's Gun Shop and Range is Kentucky's largest selection of firearms, ammunition, and firearm accessories. Located on Industry Road in Lexington. I love Coach Hall when he was recruiting me. Nobody was you know, more engaging with my family. Um, I knew my parents in the back of my mind wanted me to go to Kentucky, but I wanted to stay open-minded myself. To be honest with you, I started, started doubting whether I wanted to go to Kentucky. I felt too much pressure, uh, although my parents would deny that there was any at all. One day, I made a decision to go to Miami of Ohio, and I signed a letter of intent. 
with Daryl Hedrick. And I signed it in the driveway. And I came back in. I said, boy, I've just, uh, the pressure's gone. Mom, Dad, I just signed. They said, with Kentucky, I right? And I said, no, with Miami. I saw just the life come out of their bodies when I told them I had signed in the driveway with Miami. And I had a date that night. I was all excited. I was going out with this girl that night. I see all these blue Cadillacs coming up the driveway. And it was Coach All, T.L. Plain, you know, um, Dickie Parsons. I mean, the Cavalry's coming up my driveway. And I looked at my parents, what are they doing here? They said, we called Coach and we told him what you had done. So I was really mad at my parents and I wanted to go out the back door and, you know, and so now I don't go out, go out with this pretty girl. I washed this car for nothing and now I got to talk to these Kentucky coaches. And, uh, and they said, just go down with Coach Hall to two hours. It's a short ride from Hamilton, Ohio, which is about an hour and 15 minutes. Watch the game and come back. I wasn't real happy, and, uh, and, but I got in the car, and Coach Hall and Coach um, Parsons and Coach T.L. playing, the three of them put me in the back seat, and they're like, what's wrong with you? Miami of Ohio? You know, what did they offer you, first of all, because how could they even be in the same breath with Kentucky? You know, uh, and I was like, well, because I know those guys, and I know, you know, the coaches, and so on. And they said, well, this is unbelievable. You know, so the whole drive down was they were belittling Miami of Ohio and wondering what kind of sane mind I was that I wouldn't, you know, want to go to Kentucky. And so, you know, I always felt like if that decision failed, you know, uh, I, it, my, Miami would have an open door for me. And it never did, and uh, you know, I, it's the best decision I ever made. Thank God my parents and the coaches stayed with me because I don't know what would have happened if I'd have gone to Miami. Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance, big on commitment. We never set out to be the largest auto dealer in Kentucky. He just set out to provide people reliable vehicles and great customer service. And for the last 50 years, that's what we've done. My first game as a varsity player in Kentucky was, uh, it was against Michigan State, at Michigan State. And I took three shots, I scored six points. And I thought I played pretty well that game. We beat Michigan State. And I remember my mom and dad were at the game and they were like, God, what was wrong with you? You're scared to death out there, weren't you? <laughs> you don't want to hear your parents tell you that <laughs> stuff. They were right, I was scared to death, man. You were the co-player of the year in the SEC with Wendell Hudson from Alabama. Well, the best player on our team was Jim Andrews. The best player in the conference was me. <laughs> How do you figure? <laughs> well, the reason I think I was um, player of the year in the SEC really was I had a stretch. You know what hot is. I, I got white hot the last eight games of the, the conference. I was averaging about 12 points a game and then I went, you know, 30, 32, 36, 40. I, I, every game I was exceeding my season and career high for about six, eight games and we end up winning the SEC championship uh, by convincingly beating Tennessee at home the last game of the regular season. I missed curfew and, co and I wasn't in my bed and so Coach Hall decided to wait on me so he laid in my bed and I didn't come home that night and he slept in my, my, my room the whole night. And then he left a note, he said, Kevin, hope you had a nice evening, hope you had fun. Um, um, when you get a chance, come by the office, I'd like to talk to you. Joe B. Hall. And I thought my teammates had done this. I said, damn, <laughs> that looks like it's writing. Those dirty dogs, why would they do that? So I never called because I knew it had to be Lotmuller or Hale or Guyette or somebody messing with me. And about 10 o'clock, I get a message, uh, you know, Coach Hall's looking for you. And I said, why is he looking for me? I said, you guys are really good at making up a joke. I swear I didn't believe that a man would sleep in my bed, a coach, and would do that. When about noon, I realized the joke is not a joke. This really happened. So I had to go over there with my tail between my legs. And he suspended me for a game. So I don't know how many games I played, but there was one I didn't play in. And that was because uh, yeah. I missed curfew. Did all kinds of stuff to avoid curfew and to have fun. 
and that's how stories get carried away. Actually, that that was um, when I tripped on the uh, bicycle chain in front of Holmes yeah. Hall. I had my hands in my pocket. It was a crisp winter day, and I wasn't doing anything wrong, <laughs> Kyle. I had actually had books under this hand, and I had a sandwich under this hand, and I was like this, walking, and I had these peg blue jeans, you know, back when they wore them real tight, and my toe caught the chain, and I went face first. And so, because my hands were in my pocket, I landed like that on the concrete <laughs> to save from going, doing a pancake, and the bone went through both of my, uh, I mean, it didn't go through the, uh, my letter jacket, but I stood up, my arms were numb, and I noticed blood come out of both of my hands. I went, oh my God, what'd I do? And I had a friend who was standing next to me, took my jacket off, and I had uh, punctured both elbows. So I had to play the rest of that season. That was my junior year. And you know, you gotta use them elbows, man, when yeah. you're playing. It was hurt, I was hurt. The coal industry's had a big impact on my life. My grandfather was a coal miner, my father was a coal miner. Coal is the largest driving force in our local economy. That's why I'm a friend of coal. Double Dogs is a great place to eat. In a single word, delicious. Playing in Bloomington, it's, um, you know, Assembly Hall is one of the toughest places to play. We hadn't beat Indiana yet, and this is the best team I'd ever been on. I thought we were going to have a chance to beat them. You know, those fans were unbelievable. It was probably the toughest environment I ever played in, and everything, was, uh, every shot I took was missed. And we were down by about 30, and um, Coach uh, took all of us starters out. We put our reserves in. And Bobby Knight, he kept his starters out. And I was sitting next to Coach Hall, you know, and uh, I heard him saying to the assistant coaches, how bad does he want to beat us? And then finally, you know, they scored another basket, and he looked down at Bobby Knight, and he said, Bobby, uh, what's going on? You know, you, you got us by 30. I got my, my subs in. And he said, you coach your game. I'll coach mine, Joe. And that's when they met, and that's when the back slap and, you know, the glasses go flying. And um, I can be very, now, look back, Bobby Knight did us a great favor for being such a jerk. Coach Hall, he took the high road. He didn't whine about it in the media, but he just said to us, remember what happened, fellas. I got a feeling we're going to see these guys again. We don't win a championship without going through Bobby Knight in Indiana. Uh, it was way before the game even started. It was not a shoot-around. Actually, it was the practice the day before the game in Dayton, Ohio, at UD Arena. And I remember Coach Hall kicking out the CBS broadcasters. One of the broadcasters was Jerry Lucas, who was a teammate of Bobby Knight. And he told him, I know who you're for. Get out of here. He basically said, Coach, we're allowed to be here. We got CBS passes. Can't happen today, but he kicked him out of the arena. And we talked about how we were going to go fight through the moving screens. He called them pancakes. He wanted us to run in and drop those Indiana players. Just put your shoulder into them, take them out. We've got all these fouls to give, we're going to give them. We're not going to be intimidated like we were in Bloomington. So it started way before the game. We were very, very satisfied with ourselves, upsetting Indiana, who was undefeated, and Bobby Knight saying this might be the best team he's ever coached, and it was a great team. And uh, we did everything we needed to do to get to that point, but we still got a championship and two games left. To highlight my career, we went to the NCAA Finals, and uh, uh, it was probably the biggest thrill I ever had. We were a little deflated that Louisville didn't beat UCLA, all right? So there's a bit of a disappointment. If Coach would have probably done it over here, after we played that game, we should have gone back to the hotel because we wanted Louisville, and every guy wanted them. And when we saw the way they lost, the deflating way they lost, I'll be honest with you, there was a little disappointment. Um, never did I ever think we'd have any chance of losing to UCLA. And then, the first time I ever heard of cameras come on to me, and they said, Coach Wooden just announced his retirement, said tomorrow night's game is going to be his last game as a coach. How do you feel about that? And I'll be honest with you, I didn't know how to answer it. 
you know, and Coach Hall was standing next to me. It was a coach player interview, and he answered the question for me. He said, What's well, news? We just heard that. Uh, I don't think it's going to make a bit of difference. And I remember Coach telling everybody, because it was just he and I that heard the question. He goes on the bus and he announced what's, what is taking place. So that's another kind of a negative, you know, that we hear this. And I remember my dad going back to the hotel and uh, we had a team meal. And then after the meal, he said, hey, what did Coach say about uh, that uh, John Wooden retiring before the game? And I said, Dad, it's not going to make a bit of difference at all. We're better than them. It's not going to make. He said, well, that's interesting because you guys are like four points favored. Uh, yesterday, now you're one point favored. <laughs> so uh, somebody thinks it makes a difference. That's the third mistake. My dad should have never said that to me. <laughs> and it just went like that, you know. It's, uh, you know. So it had an effect on our psyche. It had a bigger effect on UCLA players. Those guys played like champions, and, you know, I was surprised. Well, what we were seeing, because we didn't see it on film, we didn't see it against Louisville. They were lucky to win, but uh, man, were they good that night! Every NBA team had a representative, like back in the All Star Game at that time. You had to have a representative, and Bob Ferry, he called Wes Unsell, he wasn't available. We called Elvin Hayes, he wasn't available called somebody else and, 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 and I just happened to pick up my phone. I was ready to get on a plane. I was coming to work a basketball camp in, here in Kentucky. And he said, Kevin, are you home? I said, yeah. He said, you have your game jersey at the house? I said, I think I might. He said, get on a plane, go to Atlanta, represent the Bullets for the CBS horse, horse contest. Thank God you. I said, well, Bob, I, I, I don't know if I can. He said, they're going to pay you $2,000 just for showing up. Surely you're going to do it, right? And I said, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> I wasn't his first call. I was like the fifth call. Well, it gave me great confidence because I did real well, as you mentioned, in advance. And there was a couple things that happened then. It gave me confidence that, you know, after my rookie year, which wasn't the best year, I could play on this level. But what these guys didn't know who I was competing with is I had played horse since I was a little kid. Now they're on my turf, you know. They can't block my shot. Nobody's going to outquick me. I'm going to be creative and come up with stuff. And man, I had more tricks. I had as, not Pete Maravich tricks. Pete was the, the master, you know, magician. But I had stuff that these guys, Jojo White, I destroyed him in that horse contest. And Rudy T and these guys, because they were just straight up basketball players. They didn't have the creativity, and I did. And I was a backup uh, shooting guard and starting small forward. When Phil got hurt, they moved me to guard, and then Bob Ferry signed Bobby Dandridge to be the small forward. You know, unfortunate for Phil, but that injury, we would have never signed Bob Dandridge. If he hadn't got hurt, I would have never been the shooting guard. So you have to be ready for an opportunity, and I was, and I took care of it. Um, and uh, it just seemed to, you know, that, that year, obviously Wes and Elvin having been to championships and never won, they were motivated, man. They talked about it often, you know, we got, we're gonna have another opportunity, we're gonna, we're gonna take care of it. Left-handed, great shooter, um, played for Coach Hall. Uh, I think those guys lost to UCLA, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, my career, you know, is great, but I don't, I don't really look back too much, you know. Um, I don't, I really don't. I don't reflect a lot like you would think. I'm, you know, I can't watch old pictures and video of my kids. I get all teary-eyed, I get sad. I'm like, oh my God, what happened? Where did time go? You know, or when I look back, I hate watching myself play. I'm probably my worst critic. I watched me play, you know, in, in college in the black and white film, Kyle. I don't like looking back, to be honest with you. I'm afraid of my, what, I, what I might see.